Hey guys, and welcome back to Daymare 1998. When we last left off, we made it to chapter 5, Zero Sum. Back in control of Raven. Two hours earlier. So this is basically what Raven has been doing all the time. Uh, Sam was doing what we've just seen. So, let's continue. We've made contact with our friend. <coughs> Things have taken a slight turn for the worst outside. I do mean a slight turn for the worst. Now, I'm just going to open all of the doors. Hmm. Excellent. Now, from what I can remember, we don't play as Sam like ever again. So, I, I find it a bit odd that uh, we unlock, like, a weapons locker right at the end. And they set so much ammo and equipment up just for you to fight that one caster. Really bizarre. Because, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not really much of a challenge at the end of the day. Sorry, love. I had quite enough of your nonsense. Oh. Uh. Raven Files. Well, this is the final file on um, Raven's bit. Doesn't mean it's the only one, because <laughs> we've seen that they're not always in order. But, intern's note. After just a few months here, I finally got myself a decent assignment. It pays pretty damn good too. The fact that it only involves photocopying and filling and filing cards seems to be the real crime against the taxpayers. Of course, I'm not a computer whiz or biology specialist, but people like me are still necessary in this day and age. I want them to know that I'm perfect for the position, not only because of my background, the the assignment that I've been given seems to be a delicate one, considering that the higher-ups want a detailed report on all the major international companies on the forefront of medical science, in particular those who have departments with contacts for military applications. This part is pretty easy, since once the number one company on the list must be the famous Japanese multinational Kurenusu Enterprise, the tricky part will be finding anything below the surface of the facade they put on for the public. The company gave me access to the whole database as well as their most intensive international sources, most of whom fail to reveal anything expected from the name uh, Kuranusu being from uh, Kronos, the Greek titan of time. Apparently, it also has a hidden meaning related to the passage of time, evolution, and the fact that medical technology can extend the human lifespan. The other sources told me that Kuranusu owes its beginnings to covert Japanese research and development unit that survived the Second World War. They officially produced advanced medic medications, but unofficially continued to research biological weapons that were lost after the atomic blasting and sell them on the black market around the world. My report to my supervisor is due in three days. <gasps> oh, God. Who's he? I'm afraid that all my hard work will be reduced to a hole in the water, uh, concluding any hope of building a career in the upper ranks of Hexacore. I just wish some act of God would give me the time I need to finish. Well, 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 well. You certainly got an extension. However, I'd wager that uh, you didn't live to see it. So I'm just going to continue drinking my wine in... Um, in a mark as a mark of respect for you okay so let's continue to examine all of these small bullets got some more files inventory is full that's not good ah uh, right so that's the application form um ah application form so I'm guessing uh, 
you know, when they say this is just a gift to the fan, it's all of these hidden files, they're kind of talking out of their bums, really, because it almost feels like there's more hidden files than there are non-hidden files. And even why bother just encrypting them at all? All right, okay. So application form, June 1995. The formal requests submitted through this application must be approved by the General Board of Hexacore Biogenetics. Supervisors are reminded that although Hexacore Biogenetics is funded by both the Central Intelligence Agency and the Department of Defense, all activities by the company are considered classified and higher than that of and higher than that of intelligence. Okay. For this reason, the majority of resources it receives, as well as the studies it conducts, are handled entirely in-house. Therefore, the international staff are not exempt from the same level of security and selection starting from the research team and then proceeding to the administration team and the security agents. All candidates must comply with the highest confidentiality regarding field agents who intervene in sensitive cases or emergency situations mainly Special Forces Hades and pilots of HAF. These individuals are recruited primarily by supervisors who normally select from Army, Navy or Air Force ranks to then be evaluated and subsequently approved by the board. Number card 123. Supervisor Major Hayden Vulcan. Candidate Captain David Hale. Candidate details. Captain David Hale Uh, was selected by Major Vulcan from the most decorated NASA pilots on leave. See, this is really important backstory uh, for Raven. Why is this not in the game? This like goes on. I guess this is going to detail like what happened to him and why he's so messed up and blah 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 blah. Uh, this should be in the game. According to his personal file, Captain Hayden, at 26, was one of the youngest pioneers of aviation when he participated in his last active duty on the morning of April 23, 1992. It involved an experimental test flight at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center, located in Edwards Air Base, and identified as Joshua Control. The experimental flight, codenamed Gas Pipe, <laughs> oof, okay, was to test the top secret aircraft S uh, SR-91 Aurora. A classified report reveals that Captain Hale and Lieutenant Corrick were in flight above base when the fuel injector system's malfunction and resulted in the leakage of flammable liquid that reached the cockpit of the first pilot. During the emergency re-entry phase, a fire broke out that involved Lieutenant Corrick and began to spread to the second pilot's cockpit. The first pilot was totally engulfed in flames when Captain Hale assumed command of the completely uncontrollable aircraft. During his descent, the control tower ordered him to eject to save his own life, and especially the flight data recorded by the black box. However, Captain Hale made an arbit arbitrary decision to remain on board and attempt an emergency landing. The sudden shift in pressure, as well as... Deteri de uh, deterioration from extreme temperatures caused the cockpit glass to shatter, injuring Captain Hale's head. Now in mortal danger and unable to save the lieutenant, he was forced to eject himself just a few meters from the surface as the SR-91 Aurora crash landed. Following the accident, Captain Hale was subjected to f uh, rather lengthy, painful physical and mental rehabilitation, only to be later charged with disobeying a direct order, reckless endangerment and destruction of costly government equipment. As a result, his pilot's license was revoked and he was fired by NASA. No further information has been reported on the flight data, nor the fate of Lieutenant Corrick, who was never declared as killed in action and erased from any subsequent reports on record. Formal request. Major Hagen Vulcan therefore requests the reinstatement of Captain David Hale and his inclusion to the ranks of the HAF, Hexcore Air Force, as his subordinate in the Crimson Skulls unit. Three years after the incident in Dryden, the previous tests definitely conclude that Captain Hale has recovered both physically and mentally for reenlistment. Hayden's innate ability to pilot both aircraft and helicopters make him the best possible candidate integration into the half outcome of the assessment candidate approved the usual procedures for physical and mental evaluation have been completed 
to integrate Captain David Hale into the Crimson Skulls unit under the codename Raven. Application approved. See, that's kind of really important background. That, yeah, I'm calling complete bullshit on their, you know, their reasons of why they've locked half of the files off. So you have to alt tab out to, to you know, find another way of reading them. Anyway. Okay. Right, let's, uh, oh yeah, inventory is full. God damn it, what can we combine? What can we move? What can we shift around? Uh, not actually that much. Mm. Let's just, like, eat one of those. Take some more bullets. I'm sure there's a hexacore thing around here somewhere. Might even be in here thinking about it. Nope. Nope, that's really annoying. Okay, that's fine. Get out of here, dude. Fuck off. Definitely don't want any of your nonsense. Right, okay. Uh, executive's diary. HB267. Okay, so. This is quite a big one. 12th of September, 1997. The Boston office sent us uh, another one of its most promising recruits. A young and upcoming lawyer called Mitch McDeary. The bait is always the same. Nice flat in the city, expensive ride, six-digit bank account, a brighter future for him and his little wife, happy to work for us, happy to protect our activities, including the most sensitive ones. 18th of November, 1997. That McDeary boy is truly amazing. He is an ace on the green and leagues ahead of the dusty old men I usually deal with. All the civil suits were mixed in. Uh, including the most risky ones that involve sensitive, keen sight matters, were cl uh, closed with the greatest ease. I'll be sure to reward him with a special gift and a front row seat with management at the Christmas party this year. 28th of January, 1998. Uh, McDeary is acting a bit too suspicious for my liking. I wonder if he has anything to do with the firm's most recent case and how he tackled its challenges. Of course, the disappearance of the prosecution's key witness made things easier. Did he really think every legal suit won was only due to him skills? To him skills? To his skills. March 3rd, 1998. Something is wrong. Madiri doesn't seem to care about the money anymore and is losing focus. He's likely unnerved by the recent case of Mr. Hackerman. A former employee got too close to the company more unpleasant matters. After having contracted a fatal disease from a sus substance he had himself administered to the townspeople and then finally took his final breath just days before the hearing and left his family badly off. But why should it matter? After all, the guy was no saint. It's pretty sad to develop a conscience only when your own life is at stake. I have to get to the bottom of this and see how much the misstep has affected McDeary. Um, 7th of March, 1998. Midiri has been asking way too many questions to his colleagues, and I think he might actually be trying to steal confidential information um, that could be detrimental to the company's image. We've already bugged and tapped his place and both vehicles. I need to find out exactly what he's discussing with his wife in their supposedly safe house. 10th of March. 1998. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it now. Uh, Mc, yeah, see, it's weird because sometimes it says McDiri, and other times his name is Midiri. It's awful. Has been working with some hero FBI agents. Our contacts in Washington have confirmed it. I'll have to clean up the mess as usual. I've already arranged it. A team of Hades in civilian clothes will bring the boy to the belly of the dam. In a few short weeks, he'll be just another unfortunate missing person who went out on a hike and got swallowed up by the Red Crest Mountains. It's a real blessing that he was smart enough to hide the truth from his lovely wife. Two disappearances in such a short time, especially from the same family, could beg too many questions. Even in a town like Keensight, besides, I'll do my best to comfort her. I saw the way her eyes stared at me the last company outing. As soon as the waves recede, I'll be sure to feel up the situation. 
Yeah, that leads back to a diary that we read previously. So we got the other side of it. The uh, wife didn't want anything from him. He was the creepy executive. Interesting. Okay. So, uh... What is that? Is that a H additive or is that one of the other things? H additive, great. So we can mix up that bad boy. Yep, that's not what we wanted to do. Uh, yeah, those item boxes are really are quite far and few between, huh? There we go. Cool. Wow. Let's get a move on. So, real nasty piece of work. Ah, this is the relax room. Let's have a look in the relax room. We've got another energy bar. You know what? No, we are on 100% health. Um, oh. Yeah, we've got so much health, it just doesn't matter, to be honest. Alright, let's get out of here. We just... Yep, yeah, causing too many issues now. Now, there is another override cable down there. Remember, I said this one wasn't there, and then all of a sudden it's here. We're not going to worry about it, because uh, we already have one override cable, and that is plenty. Ah, I need to deactivate the security system first. Of course we do. How silly of me. Now, if I could just remember where we could deactivate that. Um, meeting room, offices. Pretty sure it's not in the offices. Hmm. It's got to be in the supervisor's room. Surely. Ah, yeah, idiot. There it is. Excellent. Let's get going to the upper floors and seeing what chaos we can uh, bring forth. Really want an item box. We will get one, just can't remember one. I like the way that says we're going down, but apparently we're going to the upper floors, so I'm not sure. Given the context of the game, Makes sense that we'd be going up, but man, what do I know? So that Japanese company that we kind of see everywhere, interesting. They seem to um, be a holdover from whatever happened in the Japanese uh, place. Oh, or the Japanese uh, unit seven, whatever. Oh, bad, 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 bad. Right, let's run. We're st are we stuck? We're stuck. We're actually stuck as well. Because, yeah. That's the trouble if you get stuck with a melter. A melted man. Uh, you can't actually melee them because it's an instant death. And <laughs> if you're stuck in a corner. And obviously if we killed him, we were going to take damage. Really? One second. Let's be a little bit more prepared this time, shall we? At least that will be the hope. Come on, you big, ugly, overgrown, green motherfucker. Yeah, that hurt. Oh, God, that hurt. That's okay. We've got plenty in the tank. Man, those things. Oh, God. Uh, you know what? How much health have we got? That actually didn't hurt us that much, to be fair. Kind of felt like it did, but it didn't. 
Um, come on, combine. There we go. Excellent. Right. Well, we're not going to go that way first. Yeah, my god, thinking about it. This chapter. This chapter is really quite small. This is the Hades of office. Think Star's office. This is quite interesting. It's also like laid out pretty much the same as well. We really need to find somewhere to clean out our inventory. Yep. I know you're there, sunshine. Wow. Get over yourself. He made some serious sounds. Alright. Come on, sweet cheeks. <sighs> the way those guys walk, man, honestly. I just wish, as uh, one of my friends, uh, Alex. Alex? Alex. That's my. That's Dungeons and Dragons. Talking to him earlier. That's why I said that. Um, yeah, Jimmy uh, said that these guys just don't react at all. I wonder if I could convince those lot actually to play this. <laughs> uh, probably not. Anyway, so we're in the Hades office and our inventory is small. It's too small. But look, we have Mark, a pwn. T Ray, Lev, Crane, West. Whose is this? Gyro, Rook. Cry check. Ah, it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, let's start getting some hacking going on. I've drunk nearly a bottle of wine, so, and this is very hard apparently, so let's see how well, oh, alright, <laughs> nothing to see here, it's fine, um, damn it, inventory's full, that's really a pain, it's a shame we can't, um, grab some of these weapons that we've got here, we've got like, uh, MP5s and things, but no, inventory is full, what a shame. And they even do the that sort of like stars pose. As much as it's, you know, it would be easy to just... Ah, what the fuck? What the fuck? I did not know this was here. I don't even think I realised this was here on my first playthrough. Are you really serious? I actually... I actually am stunned. I don't think I knew about that. So we got Rook's Log. Now from what I can remember actually, Rook's Log is pretty cool. Come on, wrong, no, no, go back. Why does, thank you. We've missed the tape apparently. Spend every day. 
for us to accomplish this one last mission. Like true brother. I actually really quite like that log. Um, the only thing, well, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's Rook. I guess Rook was the leader. And that's Mark. So don't forget, every one of these cast a Hades. Uh, every one of these is a, a Hades member. So, there is only so many. But it looked like that guy actually got him and finished him off. Kind of cool. All right, well, I still can't believe that this was here. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. Still, whatever. Um, now, let's drop an empty magazine back. Really don't need that many magazines. Um, we'll drop that back for now. We'll drop that back. Let's, oh yeah, <laughs> our inventory is actually full. That's good. Right, let's start combining some stuff. Um, game. <sighs> Looks like the game's crashed. So, I guess hooray for that. And we're on 26 minutes anyway, so I think the best thing to do is to leave it here. Have a slightly shorter episode. Um, Oh, 27 minutes actually. Uh, first crash of the game, I guess, for two playthroughs for an indie game. Eh, it's not bad, I suppose. Anyway, when we come back, guys, I'll be back here. I'm going to sort out all my inventory and we'll be ready to move on. So, thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time.